So everybody, iPadOS 18.1 Beta 2 released to all developers, and in this video we're gonna test out all the different things that came out, some new features, some new visual differences, some bug fixes, and overall performance improvements because there are two things that really got some improvements that I wanna show off. So without further ado, let's talk about iPadOS 18.1 Beta 2. Let's get into it. I do quickly want to mention that developer beta 6 of the 18.0 version did also release as well as the public beta will be releasing for public beta 4 on 18.0 and as of right now they are kind of being released at the same exact time 18.0 and 18.1 in the respective beta programs and you can only choose one of them on a per device basis with us going with 18.1 but for the most part they will be similar the only difference will be apple intelligence but let's get into the video so let's hop right into this video, everybody. And the first thing I'm gonna show off is exactly how big this build number was. So we're looking at about 1.54 gigs in terms of total storage that this is gonna take up. So give yourself at least three gigs of internal storage to make sure that you get this installed and installed correctly. And then I do wanna go over the build number very quickly. So we go into our settings, go into general, go into about, and then go into our iPadOS version. We do have 22B5023 lowercase e. Now this is 18.1 beta 2, and it's gonna be a little bit different from 18.0 beta 6, which I touched on in the very beginning, but this is the build number. We should be getting some sort of public beta version of this within the next two weeks, and then we should be getting the final public version of this sometime in October. Keep in mind, this will not be announced alongside the new iPhones. This is gonna be coming in a later update, probably in October. So now what's new with this update before we get into all the AI and Apple intelligence stuff, I did wanna bring up that we got the high distractions piece from 18.0 beta 5, over to 18.1 beta 2. So if you guys were using the 18.0 beta update, then you would have gotten this Safari distractions or this high distractions, which is essentially a pop-up blocker for lack of a better term, but you can actually remove any element of any website at any time, which is kind of interesting. So to activate this, you press on this right here, we're gonna press on this high distracting items, and then you're gonna see that it says cancel and done, but you can literally click on anything that you want. So I can go on here, we can hide this, and then you get this kind of Thanos removal thing that's going on, we can hide this piece, we can go on here if we want to, hide this entire piece. You know, I can keep going with it. This is kind of just filling itself in, but you can go over here. I wanna hide this entire piece as well. That's all gone. And you can see that things shift over as well. And then when you're done, you just press done right here. And now you're scrolling through the website like normal without those quote unquote distractions. Now again, I'm more than positive this is focused on kind of pop-ups and different advertisements and things like that if you wanna remove them. But technically you can remove any piece of any website in Safari. And then to stop this, you just go back into here, you tap on here, we'll press show hidden items, press show, and then everything comes back to normal. So again, it's up here on the toolbar, press hide distracting items, select a couple, and then press done, and then you'll be good to go. So that's the newest feature that came to 18.1 that was actually there with 18.0 beta 5. So now let's go into the Photos app because there was a small change in the Photos app kind of reverting back to how it was before, but this is a brand new splash screen that shows up. So you have the all new design, the new collections, and the, that it's fully customizable, which is true to an extent. But you can see that now we don't have those dots down here, which was kind of like this carousel thing that we had before where there was a bunch of different categories that would be auto-created through the new Photos application. But now that's gone and everything else relatively has remained the same. Nothing too different, just again, Apple kind of reverting back to what worked in the past and not trying to reinvent the wheel here. Also, something else that came over from the 18.0 beta is if you press this edit button when you go into wiggle mode, you now have this third option called edit pages. We always had the add widget. We got the new customized button with 18.0 beta one. And now with 18.1 beta two, we have the edit pages, which is basically just a view to look at your other pages and see what you have hidden or see what you wanna open up again to be able to use and scroll through on your home screen. Some other new ones are gonna be new icons for some native applications. So if you go down and tap into find my, you can see that Find My got a brand new icon right there. And then also with the Maps application, it continues to change. Apple doesn't seem to know exactly what they want, but if we type in Map, now we have this new dark mode icon, which is much better than before. Now it's a dark all around with just the one saturated line in the middle and the blue line. And then obviously the navigation icon, whereas before Apple tried to kind of keep all the color, but dumb it down with a darker mode. But now we have this new dark mode icon, which I actually prefer the most so far. And then another big one, which I was actually wanting was if you go into control center, we now have a dedicated Bluetooth toggle. Whereas before this didn't exist at all, you would have to kind of tap into here, then go into your Bluetooth connection and then be able to figure it all out. Whereas now, if I go into here, you can actually look at all your Bluetooth connections. As you can see, it is cut off right here because we're still in beta, there's still gonna be some bugs, but you can interact with them, go to your Bluetooth settings if you want to, and things like that. And then you can even, like I said, turn this off and turn it back on very quickly with this Bluetooth toggle. So it's just an easier way to interact with your Bluetooth accessories. Again, Apple's gonna have to figure this out and fix this when it comes to 
actually showing up correctly, but I'm sure if I rebooted the device or maybe again updated it to a beta 3 when it does come out, we should be good to go, but that is a new addition to the control center, which is awesome. So now when it comes to Apple intelligence and what's new, for the most part, everything has stayed identical, right? The big one that we got last time was being able to use all the AI writing tools. So maybe if I select all of it, I do get some new writing tools like we saw with 18.1 beta one, the proofread, the rewrite, and then we can press this right here to get all the writing tools. None of this has changed. It might've gotten a little bit better, still hard to see exactly how much it's gotten better over time, but I do notice it that even before we updated to beta two, Apple intelligence was getting a little bit better in terms of how I wrote, what I liked, and what I preferred overall. But the newest piece, at least the one that I noticed, Siri still isn't any smarter really, but it's gotten a lot snappier and much more responsive. So for instance, when was Tim Cook born? What about Steve Jobs? What's the weather in my area? How long is it gonna take me to get to New York City? What's the weather there? How do I go and turn off my Wi-Fi? What about how do I go into dark mode? Can you show me what a Shiba Inu looks like? What is five times four? Can you multiply that by 10? What about times five? Now divide it by four. And what's the weather in Florida? So as you can see, even though some of the information that I was asking was relatively trivial and pretty easy to get, you can see that I can actually talk to Siri and it would give me the responses right away. I wouldn't need to leave Siri to come back to it. It still kept some sort of context. It was able to figure out what the weather was, where to take me. And again, overall, it just felt a lot more stable, a lot more crispy, and then overall just snappier, right? Again, some of the information that it's giving me is pretty trivial, and I'm sure the old Siri could give me all that information. It was just how it was given to me that I was impressed by. So I'm very curious to see what happens when Apple actually implements some Apple intelligence. So that's everything new that we found so far. Definitely leave some comments down below if you guys have found anything new, but I quickly wanna go over battery life in terms of what we got with 18.1 beta one. And again, I am rocking the newest M4 iPad Pro, so my battery is in the best case scenario that it's in, but you can see that I'm getting some great screen on time. So four hours and one minute of screen on time, took up less than 50% battery when I was doing things like LumaFusion, using an SSD, using Affinity Photo. On a day like today, I have two hours and 45 minutes of screen on time, still under 50%, so I can easily get six to seven hours if I wanted to. We have a day like this one, which is three hours and 14 minutes, only taking up 25% of my battery, so I could have gotten probably 10 to 12 hours of battery life. The M4 iPad Pro, I've been very impressed when it comes to the battery life, something that I could not say about my M1 iPad Pro, which was about three years old by the time I got rid of it. But that's everything new with 18.1 Beta 2. Let's finish up this video. So that was just about do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, there weren't a ton of feature set differences. The biggest ones were already out with beta one on the 18.1 side with all the new Siri writing tools as well as Apple intelligence kind of being out from an animation standpoint at least. But we did see that Siri as an animation did get a lot snappier, a lot quicker. Even though the information that it's giving us is still relatively the same as it was with 18.1 beta one, it's just overall a lot more stable. It seems a little bit more fluid. It, it's snappier when it responds to questions, even if it doesn't know the answers to it. And you can continue to ask questions completely in context or completely out of context as well. And then we also got some minor other tweaks and changes, nothing too crazy in terms of a feature set or anything like that. But overall, Apple intelligence is slowly coming. It's just a matter of what information is going to be behind it overall but let me know in the comment down below what you guys think did you install 18.1 beta 2 are you running either of these beta programs side by side with different ios and ipadOS products let me know in the comment down below or are you just going to wait for the public release to come out with 18.0 sometime in september and 18.1 sometime in october always curious to know everybody but if you guys did make it to the end leave a little dolphin in the comments down below check out our channel membership to get some awesome wallpapers and if you guys want to watch more videos like this one youtube thinks you're gonna like this video right here and i think you're gonna like this video down here but until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody.